Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? You guys, it's Thursday evening. Welcome to the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook and Instagram page. You guys are live here with Brandy. My name is Brandy, I'm with Brushed by Brandy. And I am a Dixie Bell Paint Brand Ambassador. I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. So it's always fun to come here and hang out. Plus, bring me all your questions and we will answer your questions tonight too, whether it's on something I'm working on or something else you might be working on. Feel free to pop on and ask your questions and my husband Sean is here to help us answer those. Um, and Dixie Bell will be on with us also. And I have a, an assistant here tonight with a me. special live. guest. This is my son Logan. This is my seven-year-old Logan. Daydreaming a little early. Yeah. Um, tonight on my live, you guys, we're going to be working on two different projects because if you guys know me, I never just have one piece going at the same time. I usually have multiple pieces and I, I think that's pretty common for a lot of us. Number one, it helps me keep a little bit of variety going in my day to day. Um, but it also helps my business keep going, uh, to help keep up with the demand of it. So I usually have more than one project. Um, one of them is this piece behind me and we've been working on this, um, for a couple of weeks, we worked on this together. We put the paper on, um, we painted our body color and we prepped it. And you'll notice I added a stencil over my paper. I did do this on video, so I've got a little video that I'll share with you guys. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and add the finishing touches to this, which means we're gonna add some gel stain to the top of this piece up here, this raw wood that we've got sitting here. So we're gonna do that tonight. And then my next piece, we're gonna work with the um, Dixie Belle Silk Screen Stencils and make that kind of fun and interesting on the sides. And I'm gonna show you how you can use the um, silk screen stencils over and over and over again. So you guys wanna go ahead and get started? Let's get started with our gel stain on the top of this piece. So I'm gonna stand up and we're gonna go ahead and work uh, a wood stained finish. So you're gonna get first. up and stand up? Yeah. Get up, stand up. Yeah. It's gonna be pretty good. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna move this out a little bit away from the wall so I can work behind it. I need you to hang on to this guy right here. Our friend, our friend Bob, who's always in the way, and his friend Little Bob. And Little Bob. Okay. All I did to this top, you guys, all I've done to this, it's a little dusty, um, is I have sanded this. I sanded my original finish off. That's all I've done. When I am sanding wood, I just took, um, I start with an 80 grit, and the 80 grit is powerful enough that it's going to cut through my finish. And then I go to a 120 to sort of smooth it out. And then a 220 is what I end with. So 80, 120, 220 grit sandpaper is what I've done on the top of this piece so far. And that's gotten it to the point that I'm ready to put some stain on this wood. So let's talk about the different stains from Dixie Belle. Um, I'm going to use Voodoo Gel Stain, which is these guys here. Um, We're coming into you. You're coming on, you're coming in hot? Okay. Dixie Belle has two types of stain that they offer. You can also use the paints as a stain, but we're gonna use the gel stain tonight. Um, the other option is no pain gel stain. Now what's the difference between voodoo gel stain and no pain gel stain? Um, no pain gel stain is an oil-based gel stain. Okay, so you're gonna get a thicker, more rich, more pigmented um, coverage than you will with the voodoo. So this is a water-based gel stain. It's gonna give you a little bit lighter coverage, a little bit more translucent, um, a little bit softer coverage. So that's what I'm going for because I think this wood is really beautiful. It's just pine. Um, and I want to just get a little bit of light coloring with my voodoo gel stain. So that's why I chose this over my no paint gel stain. Okay. It would probably be smart to tape off all these painted edges. However, I'm not going to do that because I don't tape anything. Let's be honest here. I'm going to so show you guys the real way. Yeah. 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 yeah I could have taped this do off. Do as you say. Yeah, exactly. I could have taped off these edges to keep my paint clean. I'm just going to go on a wing and a prayer here and hope that I don't get voodoo gel stain on my painted edges. If I do, it's water-based though, so I can just paint over it. So here's what I like to have out when I'm going to be doing voodoo gel stain. I have my two colors and I'm going to work with Tobacco Road, which is a brown, and I'm going to put in a little bit of gray to it. You can mix these together, you guys, and create custom colors. So if I wanted kind of a... Um, farmhousey gray brown feel I could get that worn wood feel by mixing these two into a custom color and there's a whole bunch of colors in the voodoo gel stain um, that you can mix into custom colors so I have my two colors that I'm going to use which is up in smoke and tobacco road I have out a mister bottle of water and that's in case I need to keep this wet it's water based so I can keep it wet and keep it moving it does send it tend to set up pretty quickly so I got my water out 
and then I'm going to use my Dixie Belle Mini and I'm just going to brush these together. So I love that Voodoo comes in these awesome squeeze bottles. I'm going to squeeze it right onto my surface. You do want to work fairly quickly. Once you squeeze these lines out, it can start staining into the wood. My bottles are a little clogged and almost no. empty. <laughs> yeah, lucky <let's> Seamless. Me. <laughs> so um, for that, you just take the lids off and you can clean them a little bit and then they, they work right away. But mine have been well used. So I've got my stain on here and I'm gonna just start brushing it into my wood. And I'm gonna kind of dilute it a little bit just so it will stay movable. And I'm just going to streak these two colors together so I get this really. That's a good color to use. Yeah, you like this one? I love the gray. It gives. I want this really thin coverage. I want my wood to show through but have a little bit of color in it. And then I'm just going to add in. <laughs> Curry said that might be a little liquor cabinet. <laughs> I'm going to try to unclog this bottle. So these little uh, lids just screw right off and then I can clean out the nozzle right here. Now if you want like to build a farm. If you want to build a table. Yeah. What tools would you need? You need two of these, yeah. the ones that you're using, and you would need a brush, and you would need some wood yeah. to build. Definitely, you would need wood to build a cabinet. Speak on it, Logan. Yes. Thank you. Good job. All right. Let's see if this works any better. And sure, go. Sure oh, of course. Work. Yeah. So I'm going to abandon the squeeze top completely. Oh, I should have checked that man. before I went on live. And we're gonna use the good old pour method. Whatever yeah. works, right? So much chunks. Yeah, <laughs> it's because mine's been well loved. No judgment. I'm just gonna brush my two colors together. And I'm gonna try to not get it on my paint, so I'm gonna come right in here to my edge and get right up to the edge. But I like how it starts giving these streaky, the streakiness with the two colors. And then I'm gonna wipe it back because I want that thin coverage. No. If you wanted to build um, kind of a bluish brown, you're going to need this. Yeah, these two colors. It does kind of make a bluish brown. That was probably a big part of my clog right there. Hey, Logan, whatever you're going to sell, I'm buying. <laughs> okay. I want two. I want 3000 I mean, not because it's kind of required for being a parent, but... Or for like Girl Scout kids. cookies and... What else do they sell? Wrapping paper and Maybe. magazine subscriptions and all the good stuff you get to buy as parents. Oh, so. yeah. All right, I'm not going to do all of this at one time because I don't want this to start setting up. So I've already gotten paint or I've already gotten gel stain onto my painted surface. So the plan there to keep my paint clean is a uh, I've officially abandoned that again is, is where I'm going. Do yeah. as you say. So once I've got some pretty good coverage. Can you mix them together in yes, a container first? Yes, exactly what I mean by creating custom colors. I am, I am squirting mine together for a sort of streaky appearance, but you can mix them together beforehand as custom colors. And then I'm gonna wipe away the excess with a rag. And I'll show you guys in just a minute. I'm gonna wipe away. I'll just come back and I'll repaint my edges. I'm much, I'm much better having a steady hand with paint and a small brush, so I'll be able to touch those up. And that was just my uh, lack of preparation, not taping those edges off, which I kind of anticipated. But what I've got here is I've got this really cool streaky finish. So this is more brown here, and then I've got more gray here. And I kind of tried to alternate, so it goes brown, gray, brown, gray, brown, gray. And it, and it streaks them in together. It's not consistent at all. And that's that's really consistent with a barn wood look, but it also um, fits in with the, the planked top here. So I've got this pine, and I can see the seams in it. I've got planked pine. Like this is one piece of wood here. This is another piece of wood. So I love this streaky finish because it actually emphasizes that I've got planks on here. Uh, do you know how long you use that brush for? I will use this brush forever. I've never thrown away... How about away... that rug there? Oh, yeah, my rug's pretty sad. I've never thrown away a Dixie Bell brush. They keep washing and washing and washing. And that's one thing I'll say. 
when investing in good quality brushes, I've never thrown one of these away. And I've, I have brushes that I've gotten when, since they were first released. Gosh, how long has it been? Has it been two years, a year and a half? And I, I'm heavy on my brushes. They keep washing out. I have older brushes that I got just at the hardware store. They don't have the longevity. That's the number one thing I'll say for my Dixie Belle brushes. They have the lifespan because they clean much better. All right, so I just streaked this in and I kind of alternated. You see the brown, gray, brown, gray, brown, gray. And now I'm going to start brushing it together. We have questions about the front of the piece, but we'll yes. get there. I'll let you kind of do do yes. what you do. So we did, um, we laid the paper. It's a it's one of the decoupage papers from Dixie Belle. Their new decoupage papers is what's on the front of that. It's a barn wood paper. So it kind of fits with this streaky wood finish that I'm putting on the top of this piece. And then um, the stencil? And then the stencil I did over top using Dixie Mud. It is a raised stencil. It has texture to it. I did that uh, on video, but not on a live. So I'm going to have a video that I put out on my page. So go follow me at Brush by Brandy. And I will be posting a video how, doing the raised stencil on that. So I did do it on camera, but we didn't do it live together. Yeah. I get this piece straight from you. <laughs> yeah. So I just put my uh, gel stain on. You can use water to elongate the life of it if it's drying too fast. Mine's not drying too fast, so I didn't use water on that one. And I'm able to just wipe it up back. I'm going to switch my rag because that one's getting pretty saturated. Wait, what? That's my shirt. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's not a rag. Okay, and I'm just, I'm going to have to come back and touch up my edges, but that's no big deal. So, I love this top. It's not even. It's got that planked look, and it really picks up on all the wood grain. You can see the variation that I created with the brown and the gray next to each other. I think it's really pretty. Um, the whole point of this piece is that kind of barn wood feel. So, if this had just a really, let me give you an example. This piece right here next to it, I'll show you the top. If it had a salt, this is done with Dixie Belle, no pain gel stain. You can see how much more saturated the color of it is. Um, my wood is much darker on there. It covers the wood grain a lot better. Um, this is this is much easier. The, the no pain gel stain is easier to build up for fully opaque coverage. I wanted this to be a little bit translucent tonight, and that was why I chose the Voodoo. So I love the top of this. I think it's really pretty. So I'm going to leave this and all I plan to do now with my um, raised stencil on the front, aside from touching up these edges that I have my, that I got my stain onto and that's a really easy fix is I'm going to distress this a little bit and all I'm going to do for that, why don't you go sit back with Dad? I got to find my hardware hole so I can open my drawers. Can you put a stencil or a transfer, sorry, over no pain gel stain? Yes, you can. Um, so if you're doing it over no pain gel stain, you want to let your gel stain dry for at least 72 hours. Okay, let your gel stain dry completely at least 72 hours. And then you can come back and go ahead and put your transfer over the top. You can also seal your no pain gel stain and put the transfer over that. It's not going to hurt anything. Dixie Belle transfers do great over um, the raw paint. It's not going to hurt anything if you seal and then put the transfer over as well. Can't find my hardware hole on that side. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my paper on here. I've got my raised stencil done with Dixie Mud. I'm gonna take my sander and we're gonna finish this look. I'm just gonna sand all these edges and I'm gonna expose a little bit of the wood underneath. Not that bad. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna do very much. I'm just gonna do this corner. I would normally, he's asking if I want my vacuum on. I, my um, sander is hooked to a vacuum, but it's really loud on camera. So I'm just going to put my sander on and I'm only doing this corner. Otherwise, normally I turn my vacuum on.
what I'm doing is I'm kind of distressing it unevenly. And I've got these spots right here where I went further and I'm, I'm distressing the paper. This is the paper that I attached to the front of it and I'm exposing that wood underneath. And I'm gonna get this really cool, chippy barn wood look. And I think it just makes it even more authentic feeling. So my goal is I'm gonna do that all the way around all of the edges of this. I got a couple of questions. For yes. You. One, grit of sandpaper. Uh, what do I have on here right now? This is just whatever I have on here, which is a 120. That's a 120 that I'm distressing with, which is normally what, if I was to go pick a new one out of my cabinet, I like to distress with a 120. And as far as the stencil, if a stencil had a name. If a stencil had a name, I wish I could tell you. Oh. Um, this works with any stencil though. It doesn't have to be any particular stencil. It could just be a, you know, it could be one of the Dixie Bell stencils. And you guys will see when, when you follow my page, I do have a video on it. And I just put the stencil on and I scraped my Dixie mud over the top. That was how I created this. It's a really simple thing to do, but I love how it looks layered over the barn wood paper and then distressing a little bit with the barn wood plank top. I think it all kind of comes together. So I'm a, I'm a theme decorator. I usually tend to keep a theme in mind when I'm making choices all along the way. And I think that that shows here. It shows in the colors I chose for my gel stain that it's uneven and streaky. looks like a barn wood. I've got a barn wood paper. I'm distressing like a barn wood. Everything is going in the same direction. I wouldn't come here and put a really refined look with this once I've got a sort of theme going with the barn wood. This is a, a textured stencil, so it feels kind of like aged plaster, maybe has chipped away and exposed to the wood underneath. Um, I just think it has a ton of character. And then so I if I was going to pick, sorry to interrupt you, it's what I do. If I was to pick up that sander, where would I get it from? So this is my Surf Prep sander. This is um, from Surf Prep. If you go to my Facebook page, um, I've, got, I've got a link for this pinned to the top of my Facebook page. So this is the Surf Prep sander. It's the 4x3 electric ray. Uh, goodbye. And then it's hooked to a DeWalt vacuum, a shot back that I got at Costco. Love this amazing machine. It obviously gets lots of use. It's amazing. So that's how I'm going to finish up this look that we started together. Um, once I'm done with that little bit of sanding, this piece is going to be ready. I'm going to go ahead and post this. I might put a little bit of dark wax into the crevices here. I'll just show you what I'll do with that. I would just know uh, what kind of hardware are you throwing on there? Um, I'm going to put the original hardware on, which is just, I don't have them here. They're over. Where are they? Are they in that bucket right there? You want to grab one? This one? Yeah, it's this yeah, one. Those. They're pretty simple, kind of rustic looking. All I did was clean them and that's the, that's the finish that's on the hardware. And so these will go on there. They're kind of aged looking, but those are cute. They kind of look like a horseshoe. Do they remind you of like a um, like a like a hammered horseshoe? They're like a hammered metal finish. So I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Best Stain Wax. This is brown, and this is just a, a natural bristle artist brush, and I'm just going to work it into some of these crevices to kind of dirty those up a little bit. Let me turn this so you guys can see better. Ah, oh, Faye said you're one of her favorite furniture artists. Oh, thank you, Faye. Wait, wait, wait. One? <laughs> yeah, one of? <laughs> okay, now I'm offended. Who are these other wait people? Wait a minute. Yeah. So this is just a natural bristle artist brush, a little bit of my Dixie Belle Best Stain Wax, and I'm just writing it into the crevices here just to dirty those up a little bit. I don't want it to look too new when I've got this whole barn wood thing going on here, but I don't want all over wax either. So I'm just going to dirty up my crevices. And then I'll come back with a rag and wipe away the excess just so it leaves those a little bit darker than the rest of my finish. Just a little bit of wax right in the crevices and I love that look. You could also use a glaze. You could also use your um, Voodoo Gel Stain. If you wanted to put that in your crevices, you could too. But see how this side doesn't have the crevices darkened and this side does and I think it just adds a little bit of dimension. It really brings out that I've got a little bit of moldings there. So that's how I plan to finish this piece. I'm gonna finish distressing the front. I'm gonna go ahead and put my dark waxes just in the crevices, and this one I'm gonna call done. So what do you guys think? I think it's gonna be cute. And I'll post pictures of this along with the videos that from the weeks before that we worked on together. 
<laughs> Someone mentioned they were cleaning their iPad screen and then realized it's marks on the wall. Oh yeah, sorry about that. It's, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's because I'll take my pieces and this is just this is just my kind of social media corner over here. And I'll lean them against the wall like that when I need to get up underneath. So my wall's a little dinged up. Guess what? It patches up. And you know what works it great as a wall patch, you guys? Your husband? <laughs> well, no, because <laughs> I do this myself. Dixie mud. I just put Dixie mud on my wall and then it patches those holes. It works great. So the same thing that I use for my raised stencil here will fix my wall. Amazing. That's called being resourceful. Okay, and then I wanted to work on this piece a little bit here too. This one is not done yet. I've got a little bit of gel stain right there, but my hardware is going to cover that spot. So let's talk about drawers. Okay, this is a whole nother piece. So we're going on to another project. Sorry if that's confusing you guys. I wanted to make sure that I could do this with you guys tonight on video too. Um, I don't do the inside of my drawers until very last because when I'm painting, I'm probably sanding in between coats. Um, I'm going to create dust and my inside of my drawers just gets dirtier anyway. So I don't clean the inside of my drawers till very last. In this case, someone had lined these drawers. So one of the very last things I'm going to do is come back and take all this drawer liner out. Oh, looks like that wasn't the only person. <laughs> no, someone else was thoughtful enough to put contact paper in here. Um, here's a little cue, you guys. No one has ever come back and said, I'm so glad they put contact paper in their drawers 50 <laughs> years ago. No one has ever said that. Resist what? the urge to put contact paper in the drawers. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be one of the last things I do. But for right now, it's protecting this drawer. I can just come back and peel it. And then I'll, um, I can even sand this bottom a little bit. And it will bring this wood right back. So I love a pure wood drawer box but I want to put something fancy on the sides of these drawers. Oh. Because I'm fancy. And we're going like that, And huh? this is a completely different style of piece than this one. This one I'm going rough and rustic and farmhouse. This one's a little bit more pretty and delicate and, and you know, refined. So I want to use the silk screen stencils from Dixie Belle. And I'm going to use this one here. This is the floral design. The other one that I use a lot is the mandala design. So these are probably my two favorite designs. But I wanted to show you guys how you can reuse these. So we're going to take one out and we're going to use it a couple times while we're here. The same stencil over and over. What's your Facebook page? Brushed by Brandy. Brushed like a paintbrush. Brushed by Brandy. I'm feeling nasally tonight. I started taking allergy medication yesterday. Why? Because I'm nasally all the time. It's annoying. When I hear my voice, I'm oh. like, oh, oh. God, she's annoying. <laughs> Who's watching her? We um, spend so much time apart. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot how nasally I was? Okay, I'm just looking at all the designs that are in here to see which one I kind of want to use. I really like these. These are pretty for drawer sides, but my drawers are too small. So this is a pretty petite drawer side, so I can't use these. But I think those would be really pretty just on a corner, you know, kind of like that if my drawers were bigger. Wah, wah, wah. Um, I like the floral, but I feel like it kind of contradicts with the flowers that I've got on the front, which are magnolias and these are roses. And I want to be consistent in my design. So I'm kind of leaning towards this guy right here. So let's go ahead and use this. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors. And I know, I think it makes people nervous to cut things apart. Other side of your tray. Over there. Oh. I think it makes people nervous to cut things apart. This guy's a contender too. It's too long. Ugh, why aren't these drawers just a little bit oh bigger? Oh my gosh. Do I have to rebuild them? I like this guy here too. Is it big enough? Nope. Alright, we'll do this one. Back to... Okay, so I'm going to cut it out, and I want to leave myself a little bit of extra room. So when I want come back to use this guy, he, I'm not cut too close, and this isn't cut too close. So I'm going to cut kind of down the middle so both of them have a little bit of extra space. And same thing over here. I'm just going to cut this right out. These are totally reusable. So silkscreen stencils have a mesh stencil embedded inside the vinyl. So it's going to give you these really crisp, clean lines. 
because it's essentially uh, screening your paint in, in, that, in that silk screen. It screens your paint out um, to create these really crisp, clean lines. So then you want to have out something to apply it with. It comes with an applicator tool in the package. We'll try this guy. You can use a foam brush. So I've got a couple of those out. You want to have out your paint color. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, guys. It's sparkling water. I know. You wish it was more. This Woo! would be a way much more fun live, but it's sparkling water. Well, Malia's on, so yeah, I mean, you I mean, know. It's always a fun bring, live. Yeah. She brings the and party. And I got my paint color. So the paint color I'm going to choose here is going to be Tea Rose. And that's because that's what I used on the body, and I think it would be really pretty just peeking through on these little drawer sides. Okay, so I've got my paint, what I'm going to apply it with. Um, you also want to have out a dish of water. I'm okay? a little thirsty. This is the dirtiest dish I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. I did not get this out of my kitchen. Out we're, of the dishwasher. You're not <laughs> this filthy, I promise. Um, <laughs> that, is, that's a step up. This is from my painting area. It's disgusting. <laughs> um, so a dish of water. And then, you guys, another thing I'd recommend for using with the silk screens, scrubby soap. You should have this anyways. Honestly, you can use this for cleaning your brushes. You can use it for cleaning if you get paint on a piece of clothing that you didn't intend to. Although I intend to get paint on all my pieces of clothing. That's my goal. I just use it in the shower. It's a good loofah. Yeah. it um, pa Washing paint off your hands. It will wash the paint off your silkscreen stencils, though. So, um, I've got my water out. I've got my... This is my well-used scrubby soap. I'm showing you guys the new one, but this is what it looks like <laughs> after some love. Let's go ahead and put this on. All right, I'm going to peel off the backing and it just peels apart like this. You want to save this white backing because these are reusable, right? So you want to put your uh, stencil back on your backing to save it. And then I'm going to place it on my drawer side as I want it. So let me kind of figure out my placement. I want it pretty well centered. All right. They're adhesive, you guys. They're very lightly adhesive. So then I'm just going to press down a little bit, and that's going to seat my stencil onto my drawer side. You know what? I'm going to change my color. I think I'm going to use manatee gray. The reason I'm going to switch is because I'm looking at the color of my wood drawer side, and it's kind of a warm wood color. I'm worried that the tea rose won't show up very well. So I think the gray will show up better. Or should I use my... Oh, man. I know. Now I'm feeling like, hmm, I kind of want to go darker. I want it to really stand out. Come on, okay, I lied. Go I'm going to go get Midnight Sky. Oh, man. I know. My decision. It's the name of the game. How do I not have it out? Oh, I do. It's right there. Why didn't you tell me? It's sitting right in You're front of me, You're just going to have this conversation on your own. That's cool. Okay. Because I also use Midnight Sky in that piece. I'm, I'm going to use Midnight Sky. I want it to really stand out. Right, I barely have any left in my container, so let's see if I can get some out onto my lid. Um, I actually like when the paint is a little bit thicker for using with the silk screens. Um, it, create, it, it almost makes it like a chalk paste, which works really well with silk screen stencils. So I like my paint a little bit thicker. Let's try the different tools. Well, number one, we'll use a sponge brush. So I'm just going to dab it in my paint, which is just right out of my container. And go. And I'm going to brush it over the top of my stencil. Can you come in super close? Oh, to I'm stencil? going to. I'm try trying to clear your crap out of my way. <laughs> you mean all my good earthly oh possessions? Oh my gosh. Careful of my bowl of water. I though. know. I don't want you to get too thirsty. <laughs> Let's start lapping it up out of the bowl. I mean, you're drinking a 10-day-old yeah, sparkling water. I'm sure that's what it is. Okay, as I'm going over it with my um, sponge brush, I'm just making sure that I've got it worked into the little screens of the, of the silk screen. And you can see as you go. You want to make sure you kind of press it in. They're little holes. It's literally a screen. I want to make sure I've got good coverage, so I'm just going back over, just checking all my little holes, making sure they're all covered. And that little bit of light adhesive is going to keep my paint from bleeding through underneath this stencil. Do you have a link posted for the stencils? These are available through Dixie Bell, so same link I put above in the post. 
Um, where you would find these on the website is you look for the bells and whistles line. Bells and whistles. Let me show you that, what it looks like. This is the bells and whistles logo. And this is the Dixie Belle accessory line. So this includes their transfers, stencils, the silk screen stencils. Those are all part of bells and whistles. Get it? Bells and whistles? Dixie Belle? No, right? I don't get it. It's awesome. When they told me that name, I was like, that is <laughs> genius. <laughs> so cute. Um, but the Bells and Whistles line is all these accessory products, and there's a tab for it on the Dixie Bell website. Okay, you guys ready to see this? So from plain wood drawer side, just using a sponge brush and my silk screen stencil, and I can peel this back. Oh, I know, Debbie. She is a very lucky lady. You guys see how detailed that stencil is and how crisp the lines are? Let me pick this up and show you. I don't have to throw it. Can, Can you hold, see how sit, crisp sit it still. is? I know it's impossible. There right. we go. ADHD. Yeah. You throw cannot get lines like that there. with any other type of stencil. Yeah. So now when these drawers pull out from the body, they'll just have this pretty little detail on the sides. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna show you something. Without even washing it out, I can get probably one more use out of this silk screen. It does, Cindy, it looks like a tattoo. Oh, it does, huh? Not the Fantasy Island one. Um, the paint is on so thin that I'm not really worried about the other side, but I can probably get one more use out of this silk screen without washing it out. I wouldn't go more than two, maybe three uses before I wash it out though. Because once the paint starts to dry in the silk screen, your life will not be as easy. Okay, so this time let's try the applicator tool that comes with the silk screen itself. I actually think these are a little bit big. Guess what? <gasps> Problem solved. Oh man, that's like my credit cards. <laughs> when you go to the <laughs> store. <laughs> well, the camera shake. Counter. Sorry about that. It's a bowl of jelly. <laughs> Okay, so this little, it's a little scraping tool and I can just take my paint right on the end of it. I just cut my tool to the size that I need it and I can scrape it right over the holes of the stencil. This comes in the package with the silk screens. So I use the sponge brush on one. I'm using the applicator tool on this side. Cut it up if you need to and I'm just scraping it over the holes. and filling all those holes in my stencil. You can go back over it again just to make sure all the holes are filled because you don't want to have spotty, spotty places on your stencil. That's just tacky. And then scrape off the extra paint. That helps me to see places that I haven't covered also. All right, and then I feel like I can take this off. It's still- It's okay, we're all friends here. It's still adhesive, yeah. <laughs> All right, and that's my second drawer side. So how pretty is that? Oh, I did get some paint from yeah. my stool. On, I'll just sand that away. Not a big deal. I'll just sand shoop, right along there. Okay, so let's talk about, we'll do another drawer, but I need to rinse my stencil out first. And if I wanna go back to back and I wanna keep just reusing this and do all the drawers on this piece, I need to keep reusing this same stencil. So I'll put it in a little bit of water, this dish of, dish of water that I got out. And I'm Clean just, dish. This, this, this is our dog's bowl. And this, is what, this is what happens when you tell the kids to go do the dishes. I'm just gonna scrub my paint away from the top using my scrubby soap. Pretend this is a sink, guys. Like, we're not camping here. This would be at your sink. But you want to have a dish of water ready because even if you don't plan to reuse this, at least set it in a dish of water until you can rinse it out because you don't want the paint to dry in the screen itself. It clogs the little holes of the screen and they're super fine. You don't want to clog the screen. So we have a couple of people wondering about the colors on that desk. Yes, paint. that is, uh, we did that last week. That is tea rose, manatee gray, and midnight sky. Okay. Even when I rinse these off, the lightly adhesive back, it helps the adhesive on the back kind of rejuvenate itself too. So once I've cleaned my paint off, it's not inside the holes anymore. I'm just gonna take and dry this. As long as you take care of these, 
These are reusable for a whole bunch just... of times, but if you let your silk screen get clogged, the noise. In fact, I just saw a spot that I don't care for the. Uh, got a little bit of paint in there. Let me get that off. If you take care of these, they're reusable a whole bunch of times, but once you let the paint dry inside the screen, you're going to limit you're the never light. Getting it out. Yeah. The scrubby soap does a pretty good job getting it out, but even still, just don't let it dry. Just keep a dish of water. Be next to a sink, throw it in water. If you can't wash it out right away, at least throw it in water. Okay, so now I feel like this is pretty clean. All of my screen area is free of paint and I just need to dry it. Can you push the... <laughs> is it not on? It's push the... Yeah, yeah. So it's no, that, no, you get all that technical jargon. Reset button. There you go. Even this hair dryer knows it's highly likely to start a fire. This thing is not safe at all. I would not it's use more this. of a blowtorch. I would not use this on my hair to save my life. <laughs> I did once. <laughs> okay, and so I just dried it. It's still it. It actually brings back the tackiness of the back. And so now I can take this. Let's do another drawer. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> That helps me leave. Yoga. Yoga's so, working. I'm going to pull out this top center drawer. And this one's longer, so I don't think I need the stool anymore. Do you need some help? I'll go oh, get I've Logan. got it. I've got it. I can do everything. And I'm going to make sure I got my stencil placed the right way, the same as my other drawers were. So, so do you have to worry about warping the stencil from the heat of that? Um, I wouldn't get it too close. You don't want to melt it. You definitely don't want to do that. So when I chose, I had the choice of either getting out my heat gun or my hair dryer. I chose the hair dryer. You don't want heat. It's more, I just want to dry it a little bit. And it will melt. It's vinyl. So, no. And I'm going to just use a little spatula scraper tool on this one. So that's three options we will have applied with. The tool from the package, a sponge brush, and the scraper tool. And I'm just, I just put a little bit of my paint directly into the lid the again sorry guys i like it a little bit thick i like the paint a little bit thick not too runny it can it can bleed through a little bit and kind of mess up your lines and so that little bit of you know dixie bell is naturally a pretty thick paint we use a lot of water with it you could use these with silk the silk line works great with these you could use these with the dixie bell mousse the gemstone mousse if you want to do metallics it works with the moonshine metallics um you could use your voodoo gel stain if you wanted to stain a spot on your stencil you could use the stain and just stain the wood that would be pretty all right so same thing Llewellyn's on hey Llewellyn um so same thing I just scraped over the top of my silk screen now I'm going to peel it back. Beautiful. It, it, silk screens give these crisp, clean, fine lines. You could never get these clean and fine of lines with a regular stencil. And so that's the difference with the silk screen. Sit there for a second. I want to zoom into that. Well, I really want to flip the drawer over. Well, I can okay, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. no, go ahead. I'm going to put my hair dryer on it while you do that. I got a little bit of water on the wood. That's just from the water of my stencil. <laughs> Can you unplug my hair dryer? Oh, it's that kind. It's a possibly work when it wants to. I so can't comment. Gary may understand <laughs> why. I just this, don't. These are all the reasons it became the garage hair dryer. Comes it with the ring. I can't say a thing. Turn off unless you unplug it sometimes. <laughs> it worked really good on my hair for a long time, but it is a garage hair dryer. <laughs> Poor reason. <laughs> yeah, can you unplug that? Sorry. <laughs> why do the lights keep going off in the house? <laughs> Mom's using my hair dryer again. I replaced it with a Dyson hair dryer. You guys, those are worth every dime. By the way. I have thick. Curly I don't think so. Hair. Yeah, I have thick curly hair. I'm telling you, it's worth every dime. I didn't wash it in between, so this is my second use, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. 
I'm just gonna reuse this little silicone. It's just, this is just a little silicone spatula tool. You can find these at uh, on Amazon. I've got these in my Amazon shop, art supply shops. Or my garage. Yeah, or you can come take mine. But again, the foam brush worked great and so does the, the little tool that comes in the package with it. I just like to cut that little tool up with a pair of scissors so it's the right size. I would agree, Linda, that her dryer was screaming. <laughs> Probably more of like a, a cry. Yeah, but... Like a cry for help. But I'm telling you, it is like the best hair dryer ever. It just is on its left leg. And how is it the best ever? Because it works. It gets such good airflow and it gets hotter than most when hair it wants dryers. wants to work? Well, it gets hotter than most because it's got a short in it, I'm sure. <laughs> it's a huge fire hazard, though. <laughs> All right, so I did two uses. I don't think I'd do any more than that. I won't even push it because I don't want to ruin my silk screens. And then I'm going to clean it again. So see what I mean? You can reuse these over and over again. Just keep your, your little scrubby soap, a dish of water or a sink. Wash it out, dry them in between, and you can just keep going. So that's how I would do multiple drawers with one stencil. I'm just over here doing my yeah. laundry. Yeah, no, no big deal. Ooh, it's totally cool have watching you, guys, you do this. Have you guys seen the advertisement for that guy on HGTV, the <laughs> laundry guy? <laughs> There's a whole show about doing your laundry. You should come over here. We have three kids. Wait a minute. Wait, not only do I have to do laundry for three kids, now I want to watch it for my entertainment too. Wait a minute. I'm going to pass on the laundry guy. I'm a hard pass on that guy. <laughs> Dana, breaking news. Brush my brandy studio it goes up in flames. <laughs> what? We can say it was part of a gender reveal party. Yeah. <laughs> So my water's... Wait a minute, what? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> my water's getting all soapy too. I need to rinse this with clean water. Okay, so same thing. And then I would blow dry this. Um, when, I'm, when I'm not going to reuse it, I would just... I stick these onto the backsplash above my sink. I just take a little corner and I stick it up there and it hang, hangs to dry. I won't use the hair dryer. Really? <laughs> With water in your hand? Do we have a, a fire extinguisher It's so here? weird. I'm just curious. And then once it's dry, you stick it back onto this backing. That's why you want to save the backing sheet. And then I can reuse this again even more on another piece. No, 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 no. Good. Susan, Don, no. No, I need, no. No, no, no. That was all a completely false. <laughs> no. I, I cannot stress enough. We are done. We are done. Cute little Logan that was out here earlier with me. He's the last and he knows he's the baby. Okay, so um, the only thing I would try to avoid is remember these are adhesive. So don't stick it on a towel or anything because you're just going to pick up lint with it. So that's why I just take, I just take something and I'll just hang it by a corner. Just tack it to something and just let it hang dry. But don't stick it on a towel or something because it's just going to pick up all the lint. Oh, my oh Brittany, there's no congrats, Sean. That means Sean inherited somebody else's concern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not Sean's problem at all. <laughs> congrats, Sean. I got someone else's liability. On the divorce? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to fix this little problem here where I got some extra paint. I'm just going to sand it out of the wood. <laughs> And then I can choose to seal this with either, I'll, I'm just going to put Big Mama's Butter over this. I'm going to let my paint dry and I, I'm going to seal the entire drawer side in my Big Mama's Butter. Um, and then they'll be scented. I'll do the same on the interior once I remove all of this lovely contact paper. Do not put contact paper in your drawers, people. Um, but it's okay because then you wait 50 years for somebody to want to yank it out. Take it out, yeah. Oh, I hate old contact paper. At least this stuff comes out pretty easily. I don't have to take the heat gun to it. Um, so that's kind of it. So we did a farmhouse wood top by streaking together voodoo gel stain tonight. Different colors of voodoo gel stain. Just streak them together right out of the container. You can mix them together if you want to create your own custom colors. So that was our voodoo gel stain that we used on the top of this here. And then we did some silk screen stencils on these drawer sides using Midnight Sky. I want to throw you a curveball. Okay. How often do you recalibrate your sander? Okay, 
I'm not gonna lie you guys, I know that you're supposed to recalibrate your sander. I've never recalibrated my sander. I need to do it, but I gotta sit down See, and watch the video. This is where you come answer. for truth. There is no cover up. And I've had it for a year and a year, year and a half, uh, probably a year. I've had it for about a year and I've never recalibrated it. So how do I handle keeping it in good condition? Um, I don't, I drop it on the floor all the time. <laughs> I just use the appropriate. Now we're just standard. flowing with truth. Yeah. This is a little bit of a Two concern. Things. I need to recalibrate it, and then I'm due to replace the little uh, the pad that's on it too. And I have it. I have it all. Huh? But I just haven't done it yet. You just unscrew it and replace this. That's very normal on any sander, any brand of sander. You have to replace the sanding pads periodically. Mine's pretty worn. See how the edges aren't squared off anymore? They're kind of round. That means I've used my sander a lot. So, without recalibrating it. Without recalibrating it. I just make sure my I use the appropriate grid of sandpaper. I don't have a problem with swirls. Now, back to the task at hand. Does Big Mama's butt seal that? Yes, you can it will seal it. It will it's a wood conditioner, so it's gonna condition the wood on the sides of my drawers. It also will seal my paint. So I don't need a whole lot of protection from this. It's not like the drawer side is gonna get a whole lot of use. It's just enough to uh to seal off that paint and then it will condition the wood and they'll be really pretty that's pretty dry i bet i could put butter on it do i have butter out here this is what happens when it's live it's pretty dry huh hang on please hold where's my big mama's butt uh you're looking over there right yeah i totally was <laughs> Shh. Did you find it yet for me? I always have butt out here. Is it not over there? Oh, here it is. I found it. I found it. I'm coming. I'm coming. I got it. Here you go. I found it for you. Uh, can you have me that, throw me that right? Oh, my gosh. You're a you. horrible assistant, by the Man. way. Okay, so this is Big Mama's butter. I would just How long does it take to cure when you throw the... Big Mama's butter. How long does it take to dry out? To dry. Cure. Um. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. <laughs> okay. So, see what a difference it makes in that wood. This is the part that I haven't conditioned. I'm just going to condition my wood. I'm just buffing it on with a rag. I don't want to um, smear my paint, so I'm going really lightly because it's so fresh. That's where I go. And then I just come back and I buff away the excess. And see how it deepens the color of the wood? I'll show you again on this side. Make sure it's pretty dry. Yeah, it's pretty dry. The paint is so thin on these that I can do it pretty quickly. So again, just a rag. It's and just go. it's just oiling the wood. And it smells so nice. It does. It, it smells like oranges. So that's the, nice. that's the part that I've done. Okay, you can see right there the difference that it makes in the wood. So you can use this as a wood conditioner on if you've got older wood pieces in your home. Old wood loves this stuff. It is a wood conditioner. So I seal all the drawers on my pieces with Big Mama's Butter. I'll do inside the drawer box, I do the drawer sides, and I do my glides too. And what that does is when the wood from the glides rubs on each other, it just releases that orange scent. Okay, so that's my plan. I'm going to, and it seals the paint too. So this little part that's got the painted stencil on it, it's conditioning my wood. It's gonna seal my paint. It adds a little bit of scent to my piece and it just looks really nice and refined and finished. Now I'm just hungry. Oh, I could go for an orange right now, huh? We'll go to the mall and get an orange Julius. What? That's the healthy way do to they get still, oranges. Do they even have those stores anymore? Do they still have malls Did you anymore? just date yourself? <laughs> Somebody has to I guess it. it's cheap taking yourself out for dinner. So it's uh, it smooths the wood. The wood feels nice and smooth and polished, kind of. It smooths the wood, um, just makes it look all that much more finished. That's what I plan to do to all these drawer sides. Right? Follow the plan? <laughs> You're with me? All right. So that's really pretty. Um, so you guys, I've been on way too long. I'm going to go ahead and pop off um, and finish these drawers up. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, the silk screen stencils are awesome because of how reusable they are. As long as you take care of them, they're fantastic. You get three sheets of each one that you can cut up and use all those different designs as many different ways as you want. 
So um, everything that I used in my video tonight is available at the link that I put above in the post. You can also find a retailer up there if you want to go into one of the shops and check out um, all these items in person, you can find those. And we use the silk screen stencils, Voodoo Gel Stain. Um, we use Big Mama's Butter. We used some um, Dixie Belle paint in Midnight Sky, which I love that color. Can That's I get that water dish on? Um, I will sell that to you. Super, okay. super cheap. I get those at the dollar store, by the way. Um, all right, you guys. I'm going to pop off. You guys have a great weekend. Thank you for hanging out on another Thursday with me. And I will see you guys next week.